Hi, everybody. This is Don Schaefer once again. And um, I just want to come to you. And we're talking a series now. I'm going to be having many messages that I want to share with you. And um, one of them is this week's. And this week is the New and Living Way. I want to talk to you a little bit about that because myself, as we go through all this, we're trying to unveil our paths to our purpose in life because it doesn't matter what we create and what we build in life unless it falls in line with what God's design is for each and every one of us. And that's where it's important for us to understand certain truths. And I think the Bible has a lot in it. It's a treasure chest of truths. And we're going to just take a look at things this this day and hopefully get a little bit greater understanding. I pulled a scripture in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verses 19 through 20. It says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. So Jesus created a new and living way for us to reach the throne room, to reach the kingdom of God. And he went through the steps and allowed it all to take place. And we're going to take a look at some of this and try to get some thoughts flowing in this, because I think it's important. I think it's important to realize that Jesus came with more than just giving us a ticket to get to heaven. He showed us a way of getting to heaven, a way of living, a way of doing everything. And that's where he came as a pattern. He was born just like we were born. He was raised just like we were raised, you know, and certain things he did just like we need to do, like we need to pray, you know, we need to reach out to God. He had to do all of this, even though from birth, he had the spirit of God dwelling inside of him. I know today because of that, we can have the spirit of God inside of us, but I think there is a way and an understanding that we need to have. And we're going to go through some of these points. And uh, I have a quote here from uh, William Pollard. This is change is difficult, not to change is fatal. Okay, so it was just a thought. I like pulling in these thoughts. But change sometimes is difficult, but not to change can be fatal. And I know the whole Bible talks about a change. It talks about a, a born-again experience, uh, a changing uh, of our lives. So we're going to go through some points. So hopefully you can stay with me on all this. And my first point is the total death to the life of a corrupt nature. The total death to a life of a corrupt nature. Okay, we were all born with the first Adam's nature to sin. You don't have to teach a child how to sin. They already know it's in their nature. You don't have to, I mean, as far as them saying no and possibly telling a lie about something or getting into trouble, you don't have to teach that. You have to teach them how to be good, but you don't have to teach them how to be bad. They can pick that up all by themselves. Why? Because we're born with this nature. We're born with a nature that, that is kind of corrupt in a way. It's like our, our computer system has been corrupted from day one. And, uh, and that's where there is a road to becoming free of this nature. And that's what Jesus came to show us. And uh, it's an avenue that can get us free from a nature of sin. I know a lot of times people talk about, I've got saved. Okay, what does that mean? Now, saved from a hell someday or, or what? I always like to say, I've got saved from myself and this sin nature that God allowed me to be born in, but has given me an opportunity. And I know in the Bible, it talks about, Jesus talked about, he says, there is a narrow road that leads to eternal life. And few there be that find that road, but there is a wide road that leads to destruction, and many go that way. And I look at this, and I say to myself, hmm, I wonder what road I'm on. I wonder what's all happening here. And, uh, you know, it, sometimes it bothers me a little bit, but I realize that God has got a plan for all of us. And if we're open enough, possibly he's going to show us exactly what we need to do and what we, where we need to be as far as our thoughts. But I'm going to go on to my second point here. This is overlooking the one thing on which all life depends. Overlooking the one thing on which all life depends. Much of Christianity today is at peace. And I say to myself, why is this? Why is this? You know, in the early church, if you get into the book of Acts and stuff, there was constant struggle. I mean, there was a difference between good and evil. There was constant struggle. and But today, we don't see that. 
We don't see that, you know, and that's where I'm saying to myself, are we overlooking something? Could it be that we are living lives of denial? You know, denial of the things that we possibly could and should be doing and are not doing. Could it be that? And I know myself, I'm really going to be taking a good look at this in the future sessions here because I want to know. I want to know because I I realize we're given one chance at this. It isn't like I get do-overs and stuff like that. You know, people talk about you're reincarnated or something of that nature. Myself, I don't believe that. I believe God gives us a chance. He gives us a chance. And that's where for me, this is my chance. And hopefully it's it's your chance as well that we can just get some thoughts going here. You know, because what does it mean to believe in Jesus who died for our sins? What does that mean? It's just to believe that it happened or does it believe in a process of something that needs to take place? I think it's in a, a process. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the process that he showed us when he was on this earth. And we don't want to fall short of all this. We want to be able to allow our lives to be complete in this process. Number three, selling all for the pearl of great price. Okay, you know, Jesus talked about that. He talked about a, a little parable. He says, you know, the guy finds a pearl of great price. He wants and, and, and he sold everything. So he could get that and buy that pearl of great price. And he likened that unto the kingdom of God. He said, you know, you know, the kingdom of God is the most valuable thing you will ever want to have and achieve in life. So in your heart, you have to be willing to sell everything. See, and that's where we own nothing. The only thing that we own is our selfish ways. That's the thing, that that's the ticket. That's the thing that has to, uh, I think, be dealt with in our lives. We came into this world with absolutely nothing. And from my understanding, we leave this world with absolutely nothing. The only thing we have is ourselves. And what happens a lot of times is our selfish ways. I think this is the price we have to pay to be able to be a part of what God is wanting for us. I know I heard one time, this was a while back, but they said if you take the body and all the minerals and everything that's of any value that's inside of us, and at that time it was about 87 cents worth of whatever is inside a human body. We aren't worth a whole lot as far as our body is concerned, but we are a treasure chest in the kingdom of God. But we have to sell it all. So what are we selling? We're selling ourselves in our selfish ways to reach out for a God and a kingdom and a, a way so we can walk that way and enter into the kingdom that he's designed for us. Number four, all of self must be gone before the pearl is yours. Yes, self will corrupt everything it touches. You know, it's got to be gone because it's your selfish self ways will corrupt everything. All evils inclined to nature uh, to, to nurture one thing are selfish ways. And that's where it is in life. A lot of everything that I get myself in trouble with, and you possibly do too, it is your selfish ways that get you in trouble. And God is saying, you know, you need to get rid of all that. Your kingdom is waiting for us, but we have to be able to step aside. People want the pearl, but they're not dead enough to get that pearl. We're not dead to sell. We allow ourselves to live in many ways, and that's where we need to take a good look at this. And as we go on, I'm hoping to be able to tap on some of these areas and be able to get ourselves into an understanding, because I do believe it's important, and I don't want to miss up on it. Okay, my next point is, die to this life and nature. Take up the cross and follow me. Jesus said, you know, uh, come follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. It is dying to this life and the nature, the sin nature. God wants to give us a brand new nature. Jesus says, come follow me. I don't, <laughs> we don't just get a, a ticket punch to get to heaven, you know, and that's where a lot of people get caught up in this. You know, they get caught up in the, in the thought that, yeah, once they come to Jesus and realize that he existed or invited him into their lives, that uh, they've got their ticket punched and everything is good. Well, myself, I think there's more to it than that. That's the start. That's the start. And that's a message sometimes that's not being ministered to people. People are getting very comfortable living life with, uh, without you know, realizing that there has to be something that is removed from us. And that's our old self, our old nature. We have to get over ourselves. And it's hard. I, I realize that because I myself, I'm, I'm in the same boat. 
I'm in the boat of trying to figure out. I know um, if you read in the Hebrews 11, you know, all the, uh, the Christian hall of faith, and you read about all the people who had died, you know, and how they considered it a great honor, not only to die, but to suffer for the things of God, for the name of the Lord Jesus. And I'm saying to myself, are these guys crazy? Or are they what? You know, I mean, because self would never want to do any of that. But it tells me they were in a different spot. They already died to self. You know, they were living unto God, and God had completely changed their outlook. And I'm that's what I'm saying. You know, I believe that once we come to God and realize who he is and Jesus and all that, that's just the start. But we have a lot of work to do. We have to be able to place ourselves into his hands. I know I can't get rid of self. Self, I can do certain things, but that nature is always there. God has to do all of it. And I know uh, when the rich man came to Jesus, he says, you know, if you want to follow me, go sell everything you've got and come follow me. And he, he says, oh, he walked away with his head down because he had a lot of stuff. And everybody, the disciples around him said, how can this possibly be? And, and you know, he talked about the eye uh, of the needle and the camel going through. And Jesus said, says, with man, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. That's where it, this is a God thing. God is the one that makes move. But it's our desire. It's our commitments. It's our reaching out. It's our laying ourselves out before him. It's our willingness that's the avenue that God is looking for in us. And then he steps in and he does the work. He removes the self part, the sin nature, the stuff that gets us into trouble. Because I know there's parts in the Bible I scratch my head at, it, you know, because I, I don't know if I've gotten to that point yet. In I, It's either first, second, or third John. I can't remember um, which one it is right now. But it talks about uh, he who is part of the things of God does not sin, nor can he sin. And that's where I sit there saying, I don't know if I've gotten myself to the point where I can't sin. You know, I think it's possible. And that's where in the Bible, it tells us there's a place with God. And that's what we're after. This Discover Destiny series I'm working here right now, it's for me, but it's for you and anybody who wants to follow along with me. But I'm after something bigger than just getting myself plugged into someplace and get myself real comfortable and wait for the kingdom of God someday and I pass on or whatever it might be and missing what Jesus meant when he said, come follow me. My next point, don't even think about being holy and spiritual while the old man lives. Yeah, people are living in a make-believe world. You know, so many times, you know, we think about uh, becoming holy and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, as long as there's a old nature inside of me, it will mess something up. It really will. You know, something has to be broken in our lives. We have to, God is going to have to step in. I'm believing for a revival, uh, a latter-day rain, or something that breaks through all this hubbub that people get wrapped up in, you know, trying to just compensate for a nature that's alive inside of them, trying to control it. You know, is that freedom? Jesus comes to set the captives free. I am captive of a nature that's working inside me. This is a new and living way. That's what Jesus came to do and is wanting to do in our lives. And that's where death of self can be ugly. But in God's eyes, it's the most beautiful thing that could ever take place. Death to our self and our selfish ways. God is wanting to make a change in our lives. And that's where there's many indicators that the man, the old man is still alive. Every day, you know, how you look at things, your attitude, all this stuff. The love that flows from you or does not flow from you. You know, the desires, the jealousies, the hatreds, whatever it might be. These are, this is not, this is not right. This is an old nature. Jesus came with a new and living way. And that's where my last point is. Jesus truly came to show us a new and living way. He really did. He truly is the truth, the life and the way. He's trying to get us into a place that we understand that, you know, just coming to him and realizing that he exists is, is a start. But it isn't a completion. There is a pathway we need to follow, and it's narrow. And we have to find this thing here. We have to search it out. We can't be alive with God while the old nature is still alive inside of us. And God is looking for someone to pour himself into. You know, we are the sacrifice. A grain of wheat can't be, can't be fulfilled and, or fulfill its purpose 
while it's still above the ground, it's got to be buried. There has to be a death to that weed before it can fulfill what God designed it to do. And if we can become like that and understand that, we can fulfill many things in God. A couple of scriptures I'm going to leave you with here. Galatians 2.20, it talks about uh, Christ is to live inside of us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. You know, it's to live inside of us. So, so what does that mean? Does that mean I can be selfish and live in a worldly life? No. You know, if Christ is living inside me, there's been a change in me. Romans 6, uh, 3 through 8, it's, it says, death is our freedom from sin. Okay, so there's a, talks about a death, burial, and a resurrection. The death part of this you know, baptism is part of that, but is a dying to an old nature and allowing a new nature to rise up inside. Philippians 2, and verses 5 through 11, having the thinking of Jesus, being able to think like him, being able to allow Jesus to speak inside of us. I don't think he can speak in an old nature. You know, much of our world, actually, I'll just share this with you. Uh, I look at all the different denominations of churches. And they all claim that Jesus is the head of their church. And I say to myself, if Jesus is the head of all these different denominations, why do they all have different ideas about how and living for what living for God is? They have their own rules. They have everything. Jesus, if, it, if there was only one leader, you'd think all of them would be the same. Big question mark there. Okay, Romans chapter 12, 1, it says, it talks about offering up ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and, and acceptable unto God. So we have to offer up our lives. We have to allow God to say, God, hey, I am giving myself to you. And I know it is. this is not easy for me because there is a nature inside me that does not want to give up. You know, it wants to hang on to all the pleasures and everything that sin in the world would have to offer. But I realize that that part of me has to go for you to be glorified in me. And then we have Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. It says, being raised as Jesus was. You know, uh, he was he died in corruption, raised to incorruption. You know, we have to be raised. He was an example of us rising up to a new life and something of beauty. And that's what God wants to do in our life. Last scripture, uh, Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Okay, we must find that narrow path. God has a narrow way, and we must find that. And God is wanting to do some great things in our lives. And I want to, my prayer for you this week is that this can stir in your heart. We're going to continue on with these thoughts and try to be the best that God would ever create in any individual. And I want to thank you for being a part of this. I'll see you next session. Thank you.